Hi witches! So today I wanted to do a bit of a different kind of video. This is what I'm calling things that I don't own or things that I only own one of, witch edition. Um, so if you aren't familiar with um, some of the videos out there to do with minimalism, um, this is quite a popular kind of um, video where people talk about things that they don't own um, that a lot of other people do or things that they only own one of. So I wanted to do like a witch edition. So a lot of the items that I'm going to mention today are things which a lot of newer witches get told that they should buy or they might be in sort of like a witchcraft 101 books or even wicca 101 books um, i find that a lot of these particular tools are very wiccan focused and i'm just not big on ceremonial wicca and high magic and things like that so i have found that i don't need any of them if you do have them that's completely fine use whatever tools you want to use in your practice and this is just what i have personally found that i don't need to include in my practice so the first item is a chalice. So chalices are something which I always come across in books and people always mention that you need to have a chalice filled with water on your altar at all times. So I don't do this and I think that even if I did do this, I would just use something really simple like a cup of water. Like I don't feel the need to have a specific utensil or tool just for that one purpose um, I'm just very like practical in my witchcraft I'd rather buy something which I can use for multiple different things rather than something that's only used for one particular thing so I don't own a chalice having said that if you wanted to buy a chalice I'd also just say look in like secondhand shops in thrift shops and just get a fancy glass rather than buying a specific witch's chalice or a fancy goblet the second item that I don't own is a bell. So um, I know that bells are a really popular thing that people um, talk about. I have received bells in the past and I just pass them on because quite honestly, I don't like making a lot of noise. Um, the idea of bells is just something that I don't particularly like. I'm not sure if I just have like a sensory aversion to loud noises, but I just don't like the sound of loud bells. I do have one item that I could kind of use as a bell, but I mostly use it as a representation for ancestors. So there is this, um, I believe it's called a bell mortar and pestle. Um, it has the Parthenon on there. It has this little dinger and it can make a kind of sound. Um, it's very small, as you can see, compared to like the size of my finger, it's very small. Um, I can put liquids in it too. I guess it definitely kind of doubles as a chalice. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess I've got a chalice, bell, and mortar and pestle as well at the same time. But I actually use this for um, ancestral representation because it belonged to my grandparents. And going along with that one, I also don't own a mortar and pestle. So I just find that I don't ever need to grind up things in my practice. Maybe it's because I buy my own loose mix incense and I'm not making my own incense blends or powders, but um, I don't own a mortar and pestle. Sure, there's lots of really pretty ones out there that I've seen, um, but I just haven't felt the need to purchase one, so I don't own one. And going along with that as well, I don't own an athame. So an athame is one which I... I felt like I needed when I was younger, but obviously because I was younger, I wasn't allowed to buy a knife because in Australia, you're legally not allowed to buy a knife until you're over the age of 15. And even then the types of knives that you're allowed to buy, there are a lot of like rules and regulations around when you're actually able to um, carry them and things like that. So it was all just a bit too scary. <laughs> so I just never bought an athame um, and I never really found anything I liked. And I learned how to channel energy without needing one, so I don't feel like I need one now anyway. So I don't own an athame. Now the next one, and it was going to cause some people to gasp, but I don't own a book of shadows. I know. So <laughs> it doesn't mean that I don't keep a record of like my magical practice or how it evolves or my beliefs or anything like that. I do have a digital book of shadows, which I created more so as like some information that I could pass on to like if I have children or like my partner or something. But um, I actually haven't updated it in a really long time. And yeah, it's like a, it's like just a digital, like a word, word file on my um, computer. 
Um, and I don't tend to use it very much. I started to use it as like a kind of a reference guide, but I realized I didn't need it. So I don't have a book of shadows. Um, the only thing kind of similar that I have is a tarot journal. Um, I used to have a coven journal, which I no longer use because I'm no longer in a coven. Um, but yeah, I don't have a book of shadows and that's completely okay. When I was younger, I did used to like write down spells and things in a little notebook. Um, which I ended up destroying when I moved here because I kind of didn't want to keep a record of it. I didn't want to keep it and I didn't want others to get a hold of it. So I destroyed it, um, which again makes people usually feel very shocked and horrified, but it's okay to not have a book of shadows. You can survive without one. And the next item that I don't own is a apothecary cabinet or shelf. However, after filming this, I actually upcycled an old cupboard and turned it into a mini one. So I know that particularly now with Instagram and um, Pinterest and things like that, so I know that there's a lot of visuals of having a beautiful fully stocked herbal apothecary or apothecary shelf, but I just don't use herbs that much in my practice. Like I use them, but to need quantities that large and such a large selection, like I would need to be using them every single day multiple times a day and i i don't like keeping things around which are going to then deteriorate and lose their freshness and lose their magical potency so i'd rather just have smaller amounts of herbs that i use and use them up and buy more as i use them up rather than having a, a shelf that collects dust which i know a lot of them actually do um a friend of mine mentioned that they bought all these beautiful herbs in these matching jars and they never used them and they had to move and all of their things sat in storage for months and they were fine without them. So yeah, I just find that I don't need to have a giant shelf full of herbs. The next one is a very stereotypical one and that is a clear crystal ball. Particularly for people that like crystals, I just feel like so many people feel like they need your stereotypical fortune tellers crystal ball and I don't really feel the need to have one. Um, someone also mentioned to me that they're a fire hazard, that you have to make sure that light doesn't shine on them, otherwise they can kind of bounce back and start fires. So they seem kind of dangerous actually to be displaying out there. So um, yeah, I don't have a clear crystal ball. I have lots of crystal spheres, which I have because they're pretty and I like the sphere shape of specific crystals but I don't use them for like staring in and trying to see the future, if that makes sense. So I also don't own smoke cleansing bundles. So I know that these are super duper popular again because of Instagram. I don't use smoke cleansing bundles. If I want to do a smoke cleansing, I'll use my loose mix incense. I'll use an incense stick. I don't use smoke cleansing bundles. I just find that they're kind of tricky to use like you got to light them and then they kind of go out really quickly or they get too flammable and then you've got to put them out so they don't burn your hands they drop things everywhere which is a fire hazard um they're messy they make a lot of smoke which is not good if you live in a house where you're sharing with people that can't breathe in smoke um so i just don't use them i've been gifted a couple and I very rarely use them. I mostly use them to try and get rid of them. But smoke cleansing bundles are just not a big part of my practice. So I don't own them. And I don't go out and buy them. I also don't own a singing bowl. So I see so many people with singing bowls. And I think that this is one of those things where it's gotten very popular through the new age movement. And I'm just a little bit wary of the idea of using them. Um, because they come from a country which has faced so much oppression in the past that I just feel a bit uncomfortable with the idea of using them. I know that there are different kinds of ones now, like there's beautiful crystal singing bowls and people make beautiful music with them, which is lovely. But to me, they take up a lot of space. They're really fragile. They're really expensive. And in reality, if I had one in my house, it would just be sitting on a shelf collecting dust or it would get accidentally broken. And I'm also not very musical, so maybe that's a part of it, but I don't own a singing bowl. I also don't own altar tiles. So altar tiles is another thing that's quite popular in Wicca. I remember that always mentioned like you need to have a, a pentacle on your altar, which I don't have. And I've been practicing magic for many, many, many years without doing so. So 
you don't need to have a pentacle on your altar to practice magic. Um, the other thing is you can, if you really want something like that, I firmly believe in the idea of you can make your own. Um, you know, you can buy so many different craft supplies, like little wooden discs that you can then paint and, and make your own. Um, so I think that in the future, if I wanted something like that, that's probably what I'll do. Now, little caveat, I technically own an altar tile now. <laughs> Um, very recently I bought a, um, like a Sabbath box and one of the items in there was an altar tile, which is, well, I guess you could say the first altar tile that I own. So this beautiful altar tile is a fairy star. It was hand painted by Halcyon Moon. I apologize if I've said that wrong. Um, and it came in my Beltane, um, Sabbath box by Weekend Sage and I intend to use this as a crystal grid if I'm being honest so it's it can be used as an altar tile but I'm probably just going to use it as like a mini crystal grid so um does that really count I don't know um but yeah I don't really own an altar tile because I'm not going to count this one <laughs> I don't own a pendulum so pendulums are another item that I see lots of witches wanting to purchase and I guess part of just growing up without a lot of money, I learned that uh, if you want to make a pendulum, you don't need to buy a specific pendulum that a regular necklace will do. So I very rarely use pendulums, but if I do need to use them, what I tend to do is I get these kind of pointed necklaces um, on like a bit of string or on a chain or whatever and you can actually use those as a pendulum so this is a crystal one this is a uh, charoite um i actually have a few more i have my original clear quartz one which i've had ever since i can remember i've got a couple of amethyst ones that i've been gifted um a charoite one which i purchased but i also use this as a necklace so it's not specifically a pendulum but i can use it as one so bit of a trend you'll see here. I own a lot of things that technically can be used as that, but I don't use them for that, if that makes sense. <laughs> and I also do not own a spirit board or a Ouija board. So I've never been interested in the idea of using these. Maybe it's because I've grown up on horror movies and heard stories of where it's all gone wrong, but I don't feel comfortable using spirit boards. Um, I know that some people might say, oh, how can you be a witch if you're not comfortable using spirit boards? You don't need to commune with spirits to be a witch. And you can also commune with spirits in other ways aside from using a board with letters and numbers on it. So there are some really beautiful ones out there now. Um, it's just personally something that I'm not interested in. I did receive one in a subscription box, but I recently passed it on to somebody else who could use it and um, I feel really good about doing so. So yeah, I don't own a spirit board. I also don't own a witch's hat. Now I know this is a bit of a campy kind of one, but you'd be surprised at how many witches own like a decorative witch's hat just because they're a witch. but. Aside from like a $2 one that I bought at Halloween for dress ups probably about 10 years ago, I don't know which is <laughs> the last kind of category of items. So I do own these items, but I don't own full size tools. So for example, I do not own a big cauldron. I have a mini cauldron. I do not own a wand. I have a mini wand. I do not own a besom or broomstick. I have a mini one all the way up there. I just haven't ever felt the need to get a full size version of any of these items. The mini ones work just fine for me. And to be fair, I don't feel like I use them enough to warrant um, buying another one. And I think that's about it. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this kind of take on the things that I don't own, things that I only own one of type of video. Um, and hopefully it inspires you to realize that you don't need to buy lots of things to be a witch. So let me know if there are any things which you have seen elsewhere and that you don't use in your practice as a witch or that you only own one of that um, you feel like other people might own lots of. Um, yeah, I find I love watching these videos, even just like the normal mundane minimalist ones. So I wanted to do a cool witchy edition. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.